Good evening. You try to catch some of your attentions here tonight to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ found in the Bible, the account, the true account of the one true, holy, righteous God who was manifested in the flesh. His name was Jesus. Many of you already heard about him, have already rejected him, have already chosen the way of Satan, and you are glad about it. Well, I'm sad for you because Satan only came to kill, steal, and destroy you. And I tell you, this is the most important thing that you're going to be confronted with in your life is heaven and hell, judgment or mercy. The Bible says mercy will be given to him who is merciful, who is humble, who cares about their, the, the good things of God, the richness and the glory of God through the gospel of Jesus. This is not good what you're going into. This is wicked. This is evil. And many of you know you've got a tattoo all over you. But, you know, we're here to tell you that, that if you do good, you will be accepted. But if you do not do good, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you. And I tell you that everything that is of the world is of the devil, the Bible says. For judgment, Jesus came into this world, that those who, blind, who are blind may see, and that those who see may be made blind. But see, you say that you already see. Jesus said, therefore, your sin remains. But if you would say that you do not see, then God could heal you. God, who is, who is the giver of every good and pleasing gift, gave Jesus Christ. He gave his only begotten son. And I tell you, God is, is, is not going to be mocked. He's not a liar. No truth, no lie is of the truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life and he is the way. There's no other way to God except from him. No one knows the father except the son. And no one knows the son except the one to whom he reveals him. I'm praying that God will reveal himself to you today through the son. I'm praying that you will come under conviction. The Holy Spirit said, I will come and bring conviction, righteousness, and judgment. Oh, but you don't want to be judged. You don't want to come under the judgment of God's word. If you will judge yourself, you will not be judged of the Lord. But the problem is, is that many people, they don't understand that God's judgment is imminent. Sin produces death. How can I not but cry out? Because your house is on fire. Your life is a vapor. Your sin is not going to please you. It's only going to condemn you. It's only going to sear your conscience. It's only going to be a witness against you on the day when God judges the secrets of your heart through the man Christ Jesus by the gospel of peace. Oh, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God is living inside of me, the Holy Spirit. God has a law. God has righteousness. God is a God of righteousness. God is a God of, of true love, true goodness. In him there is no darkness at all, the Bible says. The man who walks in darkness says that he knows God is a liar. I just want you today to come to the truth and just admit, look, I am the enemy of God. I am serving Satan. I am, I am in a terrible place. God, please give mercy to me, a sinner. I used to be a terrible sinner. I used to be a drug dealer, a drunkard. I used to be a God hater. I used to be a slanderer. And I tell you what, to he who has been forgiven much, to he who has been loved much, he will love much. I can't but give you the free gift that God has given me. God said, he spoke in my ear. He said, proclaim it in the housetops. Proclaim it in the light. Oh, God makes his light to shine in my darkness. When the sorrows of death compassed me about, God bowed the heavens down. Darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub. He came and he was mighty to save. He was holy and just. And, the, and, the, and he is just and the justifier of him who believes in Jesus. And we're here to proclaim to you. You're in grave danger. Your sin, your drunkenness, your pornography, your wickedness. All these things are taking you straight down a path to hell. This concert, you live for the world, you live for the flesh, you live for, for all that is evil. We're here to tell you that God can wipe it clean. God can impute his righteousness to you. It's possible that he can clear your conscience. He can clean you up. He can give you clean hands and a pure heart. In his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, and there's no peace for the wicked. That's the problem, many of you, 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 you lack peace. You lack peace with God. You're at enmity with God because of your wicked works, because of your practicing sin. 
practicing lawlessness, your transgressions. Oh, but he will. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ saved me, and he can save you. He is the only one that will stand between you and the gates of hell. He is the only one that cares about you. He is the only one that knows every single thing that you have ever done in your life, things that you have forgotten about, things that you are sorry about, and confess your sin against man. But have you confessed your sin against God? We don't just only hurt our peers, our parents, our friends, our work co-workers. We also sin against God, God who has given us life, God who has spent time in molding us and fashioning us. Jesus Christ spent a lot of time creating us. He loves us. His desire is that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. All things are created for him and through him, for his glory, because Jesus Christ is Lord. Is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Is he the Lord of your life tonight? We're not promised tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. If you were going to die tonight, do you know where you would go? Would you go to heaven or hell? If you go to heaven, what does it take to get into the gates of heaven? Who knows? It's more than just believing. The demons believe but tremble because of the power of God. God is the God of all things. We need to believe in that we need to obey the Lord. Just like any kind of relationship, any kind of marriage or friendship, if only one person is putting forth the effort which God has put forth through his son, and that other person does not respond to that relationship, that relationship will break and fall apart. You need to be ready. People put their time and their effort into their 401k plans, making provisions for the future. People put time and effort into their education to make preparations for today. This is temporary. This stuff is temporary. Most you've got of it is 60 years. If we're lucky, if we're lucky and we don't get a disease like cancer or something horrific like that, we need to make preparations for eternity because eternity is forever and ever. Once the decision has been made by the King of glory, Jesus Christ alone, and the decision has been made for you to either go into the gates of heaven or into the gates of hell, there is nothing that will revoke that decision. That decision is made. No amount of prayers will have you be delivered from that place. No one can pray you into heaven. Once you are decided to go into the gates of hell through your own free will, you have chosen to go to hell. No one will save you from the gates of hell. No one. You will not have a name. Your entire being will be hopeless. You will have weeping and gnashing of teeth. Gnashing of teeth is great pain forever and ever. Have you ever driven and wondered, is there more to life than just this? There is. It's Jesus Christ. I am living proof and testimony of his goodness. He has delivered me from so many things. I stand before you a new creation through Jesus Christ alone. Doesn't matter what I tried to do on my own because it only failed. Everything I did on my own failed. Everything that you will try to do out of your own strength will fail unless the Spirit of God delivers you from that bondage. There is freedom in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ is a wonderful God. He has wonderful things planned for your life. But you have to make that decision, that decision today to serve him as Lord. Many people profess to be Christians, but are you walking in the way of a little Christ? Are you doing the things that please Jesus Christ? If Jesus Christ was sitting next to you in this concert, would he be pleased with it? Absolutely not, because he has the spirit of holiness. Jesus Christ is a holy God, and that's the kind of spirit we need to have inside of us in order to get into the gates of heaven. We have to have an act of holiness.